Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Demura, and today we are going to take a look at a Rotary Workday. Uh, we did one just recently and we had it hosted by the uh, Boys and Girls Clubs. And with me today I have Deborah Herrick, who is the uh, Director of Carpenteria, correct? Correct. And uh, Michael Baker, who is the Executive Director of uh, four units, actually five if we count the... Uh, and by the way, welcome back. Yeah, thank yeah. you for having me again. Deborah, we'll start with you since you're new. Uh, we already had this guy here a few times. So, <laughs> um, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm from New York, okay. but I've uh, most of my adult and professional life has been here in Santa Barbara County. I have a PhD from UCSD in his, um, Hispanic literature and innovative teaching methods. And my earlier background was in sociology, okay. social work, community engagement, so coming to the United Boys and Girls Clubs of Santa Barbara, and specifically the Carpinteria Clubs, has been a great experience for me to really engage and build and help participate in my community and to work with other service organizations like right. Rotary. Sounds like it fit well within uh, your educational background then. Oh yeah, there's no place like a Boys and Girls Club if you want to engage with a lot of different humanistic, um, ethical, moral, social um, projects. And Carpinteria fit in well to the community? Well, there's no community like Carpinteria. <laughs> um, I don't think, I don't know. I've never um, been part of a community as close-knit and cooperative and um, engaged as Carpinteria. Uh, it's extremely welcoming, extremely gracious, generous. There's so many adv advocates for the kids that we serve. Um, Rotary is one of the leading advocates, but... We also have the Lions Club, the Carpentry Arts Center, the Carpentry Unified School District. We have so many strong partnerships with the Carpentry Boys and Girls Club. Great. And I don't know if Michael told you this or not, but that's kind of an icon, the Boys and Girls Club uh, of Carpentry. That mm -hmm. it's been famous. It's had a lot of pretty famous people been through it. Mm -hmm. well, well, thank you for that, Michael. How about you? Well, you can see why I'm a big fan of Deborah's. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Well, and it isn't because she's from New York, even though I'm from New York as well, but uh, that's not the reason she got the job. Uh, things are going great. Uh, the the, uh, the work day and, uh, that we had with Rotary was just phenomenal. I know we're going to talk more about that, but that was just what a great, I, I, as one thing that we, we both have in common as Rotarians, um, seeing that many people come together uh, in service of uh, people that they don't even know, they've never met before. True. That's what's, that's what's so awesome about it. That is, that is true. And I guess it uh, must catch both of your passions, Rotary and what you do for a living. Yeah, it, did. it, was, it, was, a, it was a good day. Okay. Uh, seeing it all, all come together and uh, knowing the kids are going to benefit from it. And the, the kids, because we, we did this on, on Veterans Day, uh, the clubs weren't open that day. And um, uh, we knew that following Monday, there were going to be a lot of surprise faces and happy faces when they got there that those folks wouldn't get the chance to see. So felt a sense of obligation uh, when I was talking to the group to, to make them really understand how appreciative the kids are going to be of, of, of the whole project. So it was, it was a wonderful, wonderful day. And I'm so proud to not only be a Boys and Girls Club professional, uh, but to be a Rotarian. Now, how much uh, planning did this take, time-wise? We just, one day. No, it, was, <laughs> yeah. it took us a while. Uh, and I, quite honestly, the person that deserves a lot of the cre uh, credit is Ryan Clements. Uh, mm -hmm. Ryan's a gentleman that's from... Uh, Georgia. Right. He's a general contractor, Rotarian, and uh, he organized all the teams, uh, who's going to be where for the service projects, because we had, we had things happening at two, uh, two clubs, one in Santa Barbara and one in, one in Goleta, and then our Carpinteria Club was really adopted by the local Rotary Clubs there in Carpinteria, but it was still part of the plan, right. and there's a lot of moving parts. You're talking 500 people yeah, yeah. coming to do a service project, busing them in and just getting them home, and it was the, and making sure that people aren't just standing around waiting to do something. Everybody was busy all day long. And that was literally over a half a day's time, too. It was. It wasn't a full day. It was. Um, we estimated about 2,500 volunteer hours for that yeah, little was, window of time. It was amazing. Amazing. That is amazing. Let's jump into the pictures because I sure. know some of these pictures sure. have pretty interesting stories. Uh, the first picture, actually this picture I took, uh, it's a picture of uh, my van actually. <laughs> and one of the things that I was volunteered for was to receive some of the um, backpacks and school supplies that were going to go into them. They told me that there would be six boxes. Um, that picture, by the way, shows the van maxed out. That's uh, six feet high and about eight feet deep of, wow. of boxes for the, the um, program and the project. Now, do you know how many backpacks we actually had? 400. 400. 400 backpacks, and, and we're going to, we have four traditional club locations, Lompoc, Goleta, uh, Westside Santa Barbara, and Carpinteria, and what we're going to be doing is giving 100 of those to each of those locations to give nice. to the kids that are in need, so 
Um, this, the beauty of this whole project was it's benefiting our whole organization from Lompoc all the way to Carpentry and everywhere in between. So part of the uh, volunteer staffing was actually to stuff those backpacks and yes. put them all together again. Yeah. That, that's huge. <laughs> Okay, uh, we're going to jump into the uh, Carpinteria site first, sure, sure. and we're going to look at that. Some pictures. Um, the plan was to do quite a bit more. We had to scale it down to uh, something that was more manageable, so we painted uh, actually the gymnasium, the lower mm -hmm. level. And uh, how was that organized? Tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, the Carpinteria Rotarians um, were really took the initiative. Um, um, Wade, you, as well as Art. <laughs> Um, Fisher, I think is his last right. name, um, and Janice, they really stepped up to help gather not only um, a strong group of Rotarians, but also some interact teenagers right. who were really great assets. This was an extreme, I actually thought this project was ambitious. I asked <laughs> some parents to come and help out and I told them they would be there all day. But the Rotarians came and they were so expedient and <laughs> skilled and with a real a lot of care and detail, they knocked it out in what, two and a half hours? Yeah, a little over that, yeah. That, that's great. I was so impressed. Now one of the uh, gentlemen we brought in, the first picture shows a picture of Kevin Baird. And I put this up there because uh, Kevin had the assets to be the, the painter and cut the top line for us. He's 6'9", mm -hmm. and that's about a nine-foot line right there mm -hmm. on the wall. <laughs> so wow. uh, as you can see, the second picture has a picture of uh, our city manager, Dave Durflinger, who is also mm -hmm. uh, a Rotarian, standing on a bench cutting the same edge. Mm -hmm. And Dave's almost six feet himself, so uh, awesome. that was impressive. The next picture we have, uh, Deborah, why don't you tell us about this one? Um, this picture shows a, a nice group of um, a number of people, including our VP of Operations, Jamie Collins, who was also really right. integral to organizing and carrying out this project. So you can see everyone is doing, it looks like the first coat of paint. We actually did two coats, and that's why I say this was a great job, a really coherent organization. It really speaks to how much the Rotarians wanted to really finish the project. That's great. And um, two colors, were they both the same color? Oh, is this the, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I, I can't, is this I, what's I, happening I, here? This is the, um, <laughs> The bloopers. So <laughs> at one point, the, it looked, we got there was a little bit of confusion. And they started using the primer on top of the oh. the colored paint. Uh, okay, <laughs> got it. So that's what happened. Okay. <laughs> well, it came out great. It looks it looks very nice. Uh, excellent it's, job there. Mm -hmm. And then I have a picture. Uh, the next picture shows the actual group, and there's about 20 of them there mm -hmm. that participated in that. Now the interactors were all from Carpentry High School, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, which was mm -hmm. great. And that's part of um, mm -hmm. the outreach program of the mm -hmm. Carpenteria Club. Mm -hmm. Actually had three clubs there, the uh, morning, noon, and evening club. Mm -hmm. So all, all three clubs were represented. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. And I see a, a mini Rotarian there in pink. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, we even have some little brought, helpers. Brought the family. That's great. And yeah. just to speak to Michael's point, every all of the kids were ex just so exuberant and so enthused when they saw the new gym. <laughs> well, that's great. Good to hear. Well, thank you. I guess we have a little bit of trimming to do. You're going to do some of the work, change some we'll of the We'll finish the, right the, the trim okay. with some of the parent volunteers. Good, good. And then the next uh, set of pictures, we actually moved now to uh, Colita. Yeah. And uh, the back area of that one was done. Why don't you jump on this one there? Sure. So uh, the, this is the side of the uh, Goleta Club. As you face it to the right side, uh, there was quite a bit of shrubbery there that uh, got cleaned up. Um, it was an area that was very difficult for the children to walk um, to get to the back of the club. And this actually, in the old days, Wade, you may not have known this, this was actually the entrance to the original club. Oh, I didn't. I that did not the, it was know a that. side entrance one of the, uh, when it was first built. It's right, right there. But, uh, so, yeah, it was uh, quite a bit of work cutting it back. And uh, we, we had a, uh, a very good Rotarian who happens to be sitting at this table who, uh, <laughs> who donated some product to help us make that happen. So thank <laughs> you. True. Thank you very much. We, for we that. brought the uh, shears out for the big mechanics. Yeah, you shears. did. You certainly did. <laughs> and uh, the bottom picture there, you see the technology center. Yeah. Um, now, um, again, I, I, I do want to give a shout out. You do see on there Cox Technology Center. They actually sponsored that, that, that site for us. Very nice. And all the equipment in there that you see. And it's busy with kids every day. Well, the kids that are here now aren't kids. These are actual Rotarians. And they were looking up. Um, coding the books in our in all of our clubs uh, in in the, for the Galita Club particularly this this site 
with the grade level and month. So they were doing, if it was, if it's a third grade, okay. second month okay. book, they were coding at 3.2. They had to look up each individual book and code wow. it. Wow. So that when a child comes in and we know that they're in their second month or third grade, we know what's the proper book to give to them for reading. That's perfect. Now, do you know how many books you guys actually had to categorize? You know, them? I don't know the number. I know, I saw it stacks and stacks and stacks. It was, a, it was a lot of books. And they, they knocked them out. They knocked them out. Great. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, then the next picture we have, okay. Playground on the outside. Play area. Of course, we have to paint that blue. That's Boys and Girls Club blue or Rotary blue. Too, that was, so. It was a good choice of color, by the way. It looked it's really great, nice when it was it's done. It's a great color. I love that color. And you must have had 15 people on the outside there? Oh, at least, yeah. Because and that, there's two structures. Yeah, there was, there, was a, there was probably closer to 30 people that were doing wow. the back area uh, of the Goleta Club. And at this site alone, there was probably 100 and, 110, 115 volunteers there for okay. the day. And uh, they just... They, they knocked it out. I mean, they did a great job in, at the Goleta Club. And um, um, Ashlyn, who's the club director there, uh, all the club directors uh, where the clubs were being renovated were working that day, which was typically a day off. But, but I mean, how can you not work that day when exactly. you see all those people coming to help out? And True. It mm -hmm. was just, it was an awesome. Well, this was, that project was actually kind of adopted by the two Goleta Clubs, Ashlyn being a member of the Goleta Club. Yes, she and is. then um, the chair of that one, the one that was running it, was. Uh, Scott Phillips also oh, from the okay. Noontime Club. Oh, wonderful. So, yeah, it's good. And uh, hopefully they get some buy-in with that. Well, the other, the other thing that where they were a big help, too, was uh, Eric uh, from Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara oh, Airbus. Yeah, Airbus. Yeah, Eric uh, Onan. I always say his name. Onan or Onan? I think it's Onan. Onan. Um, yeah, Eric Onan. Um, he, uh, they provided all the transportation for the day to get the Rotarians yeah. around. So um, you can imagine carting 500 people yeah. and making sure they get back to where they need to. Um, that was a huge help to us. And he's a Rotarian as well. We had, we had six buses moving all day from daybreak until after the concert. Unbelievable. <laughs> it was unbelievable. unbelievable. Next picture you have shows the uh, Cubbies inside the gym. Yeah, this, this is one of my favorite photos. Um, <laughs> a typical Boys and Girls Club. You can never have enough Cubbies. Uh, the kids, the backpacks, I mean, it just, usually it has a life of its own. It crawls on the floor, <laughs> becomes this amoeba. And um, we, they did, I think it was, the final total was 26 or 27 cubbies that they oh, built wow. that were uh, four foot by, um, by six foot cubbies. Okay. And they're really, I mean, Deborah has a couple now in her club, I think. So they went all to the, the different units. All of our clubs. Assembled here yeah, and, and yeah. moved around. Oh, so again, it's just great. another example of how the West Side, what we did there at the, this is the Santa Barbara Club, mm -hmm. at the West Side, um, they assembled all the cubbies. And okay. I was a little nervous because we had all the wood cut, pre-cut, everything was ready to go. And it was just assembly. And they were figuring out the best way to do it. They had a prototype. And then 15 minutes later, it was like Santa's workshop. <laughs> it's, it just, it was, yeah. They just they just got it going and it went really well. <laughs> Good. And then the next picture we have shows the um, the, garden. the garden. Yeah. The garden. That looked the, pretty successful there. Yeah, they cleaned it up and uh, this will be an area that we have another group that's been helping us again through Rotary mm -hmm. uh, that's been helping um, with this project. So we're hoping to have the vegetables and things growing there and the kids are going to be able to take those nice. home to the family. Oh, very nice. Yeah, the next picture we show of some Rotarians actually painting the fence along that edge. I put this one in there because... Uh, Two good friends of mine, actually, in this picture. Uh, one is uh, Les Grossman, who's a past governor, and his son on the inside, Peyton opposite him. Nice. So it was a father and son team of Rotarians right there doing that job. There really was a lot of family members that did there, come there out. There really were, yeah. Yeah, and that's, that really is a family thing. Good. Next picture we have, uh, I put this picture in there because uh, it shows uh, the press, I would say, and how much coverage we actually got in that date. Oh, yeah, look at <laughs> that. Was, yeah, was we had quite a few people there. Good coverage. Uh, the person in the middle, um, Alice, who's taking the pictures with the uh, camera there, she's actually from Evanston. She's from headquarters. Oh, wow. Yeah, and she was assigned the, the task of uh, photo documenting this. Uh, we'll probably see Great this in day. some of the magazines. Great day. Right. And the gentleman on the right, on the ladder, that's the closest he's ever going to come in his life to dunking a basketball. <laughs> just, just want to point that out. <laughs> okay. It's up in the glass. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the next picture, I, I thought, kind of a fun picture. Yeah. You guys yeah. having him scrubbing the floors. Detail. Uh, was, oh. was, that, was that your idea there, Michael? Yeah, I'm tough. Up there. Yeah, <laughs> tough. You are tough. tough. Mm -hmm. I, I see one of them kind of passed out. That yeah, you're he's out hard. cold. <laughs> I'm working all day. <laughs> I, I, I looked at him. He was actually working that way. Yeah. He wanted to make sure he got close enough to get everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next picture, we show the cubbies actually moving around yeah. so you can see the size of those. And that's got Jamie in there. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie's, and again, the Deborah, Deborah mentioned uh, Jamie. I can't emphasize enough that uh, it, it, 
it takes a really good team to, to, to run the boys and girls clubs every day, and um, Jamie's doing a great job in overseeing the club directors. It, it was great seeing all the staff there. I mean, yeah. literally all the staff was mm -hmm. at all three of these places doing a great job. Next picture we have is um, incoming Rotary International president on the right, Ian Risley, um, and then go over the other three. Yeah, there. so the, yes. in, in the white shirt there is our board president, Jim Crook, uh, yeah. Milpas Motors. The guy in the red, I have no idea who that is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the gentleman that my arm is, uh, hands on his shoulder, um, that's Jesse Gonzalez. He's the assistant, assistant director of our, our West Side Club. And I remember exactly what I was telling um, Ian. I said, this gentleman here, uh, you're looking at the future of Boys and Girls Clubs. I mean, this is the next generation of club leaders right here. Right. He's really, he's awesome. Right. He grew up in the club. And he grew up through the club. He, he, he told us about the before and afters. Yeah. He, of when what he, that club has done for the community in that neighborhood. It was a very high gang infested area, and he, he, he remembers going there as a kid and being, you know, being very difficult for him to even get to the club because it wasn't safe. Yeah. Now he's, he's, uh, he's working there, and he uh, makes sure that that park is a safe place for the kids. Outstanding. It is. Yeah. Next picture is the uh, sound studio. You got to tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about that. That's notes for notes, <laughs> a great partnership. So we give space at the West Side Club um, to a group called Notes for Notes. It's a nonprofit, and um, they provide free music lessons for our kids. Ah, okay. So this is a space in the West Side Club, and it, it's an actual full-on studio. Uh, kids can piano, guitar, drum lessons, and then they go in. They can record their own music, but then they can also cut their own. CD or, or uh, actually now it's all digital, so they, they get an email to them. I mean, I don't know how that works, but that's <laughs> uh, that's how it works today. So there's there's kids that come in with their band and they'll play and they'll record right. it and take it home the same day. Very nice. Next picture we have uh, a picture of uh, Hussam Hishmay, who actually was uh, he's the owner of uh, the Dominoes. He lives in the uh, Ventura area. He's a member of Ventura East, but uh, oh. actually he's the current president. Um, Good man. A great man. Uh, but he came along and helped us out with the feeding all of the volunteers, great. the 500 volunteers. One of my new heroes. <laughs> I don't know how he did it. He's great. He was great. Then the next picture actually shows the rig. So yeah. um, he actually literally drove in the store for us. So yeah. everything was fresh. That's wonderful. Done right there. <laughs> uh, next picture we have is uh, the line of people waiting to get their food. And at that time, it was a wrap up, everything was pretty much done. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one gentleman there, I'm going to throw a little, a little uh, teaser out for this guy. That's Dean Ritter, and Dean is the one that, uh, well, he's from down in the LA area. Okay. Yeah, and he comes up and seems to sneak into a lot of these photos. Good man, <laughs> great guy, does a lot of work. <laughs> Next picture, I'll have you go over this one there, Michael. Sure. So uh, we actually, uh, that's the press coming again. That's uh, John Palminteri, local local TV celebrity. Uh, he is the guy in the street. And he's interviewing Brad. Uh, Brad is our, uh, what's Brad's official title? He's a director. Yeah, director. So uh, Brad was really the main reason why this ended up happening the way it did, this whole uh, whole campaign and ending in Santa Barbara. Uh, so he's there being interviewed. And then uh, the next picture below, um, those are the, those people right there are really the the folks that uh, were the brains behind the whole the whole operation. Right, right. Making this whole thing happen. Danielle and Brad and, and, and the gentleman closest in the photo all the way to the left that's that's Ryan Clements that's Ryan that's Clements. that's my hero uh, uh -huh. he, he made this whole thing happen and in the bottom photo you can see all the people in the blue shirts um, <laughs> and you see the Canadian flag and American flag and one thing I didn't know until getting more involved in the ceremony I didn't know that Veterans Day was the same day in in Canada as it was yeah I never knew that I, that was something I learned so you learn something new every day right that's right and um, so he uh, that's a photo of all the folks right at the beginning of our celebration. Uh-huh, right. Then the uh, next picture shows um, actually of the uh, uh, ce yeah. ceremony, the, the flag salute and ceremony, because we actually had two different groups there, one from Canada. Um, yeah. This area, the region that we represent in Rotary actually includes a portion of Canada. That's why we had both uh, national yeah. anthems played there. And that was, what was a nice touch was hearing, hearing both groups sing their own national anthem. Yeah. And seeing people that were uh, American singing the Canadian national anthem and vice versa, again, that's what Rotary is all about. It is. It is. Now we didn't have the uh, tape, but we probably should have done Australia too, since the international president's from Australia. But uh, don't tell him. Don't tell Ian that. And the the, <laughs> the picture, the next two pictures that you see, uh, that's <laughs> Councilmember Kathy Murillo, and her her, her um, district is the west side of Santa Barbara, so that's her area. And, uh, Big supporter of the Boys and Girls Club. Nice came proclamation out. she gave you, by the way. Yeah, yeah. it's nice. always nice. Yeah. It's, I like those. Very I like nice. those. And the, the final picture on the bottom is uh, Jeff Henley. Uh, Jeff is a product of Boys and Girls Clubs. He uh, went to the Boys and Girls Clubs in La Habra. Mm -hmm. 
as a child that went to UCSB, uh, very successful uh, businessman, uh, a vice president at Oracle. Um, got, he's done really well in life and uh, never forgot where he came from, though. True, true. He is our biggest individual supporter in our organization, that yeah. gentleman right there. And, and we see him all the time. Uh, he's, he has man. a great presence, and he's always there for you when you need him. He is a good man. He is definitely a great man. So the next picture we have actually uh, is the gold card presentation, right? Sure. I came here to show off mine. This is my gold card right here. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. So, so tell us a little bit about that. Sure, I, and I'll, I'll have Je Deborah join me on this because it, she's, she's the reason that these kind of things happen, the club directors. What, what, what we found out is that um, on a national level, a child that attends a boys and girls club 105 times in the calendar year, that's a magical number. When they attend 105 times, they're twice as likely to graduate high school in time and twice as likely to lead a healthy lifestyle. So that's the number we want to shoot for for all the children. So we start the year, the kids are given a purple membership card when they first join the boys and girls club at, in January. And then when they achieve 52 days, which is the halfway point to 105, um, then uh, they, get a, they get a silver card, they become silver card members. When they achieve 105 days, they're given a gold card, uh, and that gives them special privileges at the club. So what we did here was, as I, I mentioned to everybody here, I, I don't have a lot of power in life. Uh, my, my, my wife reminds me of that all the time. <laughs> and uh, I'm kidding, honey, I love you. And, um, it's documented now you're yeah, in trouble. I'm in trouble. Can we edit that? No. Um, so what I did do was I, I gave um, Danielle and Brad and Ryan, made them gold card members of our right. organization. So they took those back with them. And it was nice to see it on Facebook. Ryan posted That's said, right, he posted it. Yeah, he said this is the most the biggest highlight for him was becoming an yeah. official member of the Boys and Girls Club. But maybe you can talk a little bit about the, what the kids, when the kids get their gold cards, how excited they are about that. Kids are really excited. They, um, it not only recognizes the fact that they come and that they um, are doing their part to uh, contribute to their own um, moral, ethical, academic, um, athletic success, but it, it also affords them certain privileges in the club. If you have a gold card, you get to stand first in line sometimes for Snack Shack. You get to help out selling the snacks during snack time. You um, can take out certain um, equipment and games. So it really is an, um, a privilege to be a gold card member, Sounds something to work towards. Oh, that, that is great. It's a great program. So that. membership has, has its privileges. Yeah, it does. The, the <laughs> final photo that you see there, uh, Wade, is um, actually I asked the question in the very beginning when I got to speak, I said, how many people here, raise your hand if you're not from Santa Barbara? Mm -hmm. And they raised their hands. And it was ev uh, virtually everybody there. Virtually, yeah. And True. I said, that's the whole point of Rotary. You guys all came here to help out in a community that you're not from, True. to make a difference in kids' lives that you'll probably never meet. Hmm. Uh -huh. The Connecting for Good Tour actually started in a Boys and Girls Club in Hawaii about a month before this. And, so and you didn't take me. <laughs> we tried. I know. We tried, but <laughs> you didn't have your gold card with you. I, I, I might, couldn't get it without the gold card. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next picture is a picture, a group picture that we started taking. This yeah. is one that Alice took. Um, Amazing. And you can see the, the sea of blue right there. All the Rotarians mm -hmm. that showed up to help out. The next picture shows her actually staging us in for the picture that you'll see uh, mm -hmm. following that. And that's actually the one that Beautiful. she took. I, I believe that's probably going to be showing up in the Rotarian magazine. It's a beautiful yeah. picture. Beautiful. Uh, it's a great story, uh, something where everybody's done, done an outstanding job. Oh. So tell us a little bit, um, a little wrap-up. What, do you, what sure. do you think? What did you get out of the, uh, the project and all of the Rotarians that were involved? I, my, I, I have a, vi a, vi a video in my head you know, throughout the day that I, that I replay. And, um, I'll never forget, and that it's a photo that I took myself, uh, there was a mother who was a Rotarian who had her daughter uh, in our West Side gym, and they were painting the wall in the gymnasium. And I said, can I take your picture? She said, absolutely. So I took the picture, and the little girl goes, yay, Rotary. Oh, like, oh, cool. uh, there's a future Rotarian right yeah, there. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that, was, that was a good memory. Um, the, just to see the look on the faces of our club directors uh, when they saw all these folks coming in to help them, because it, it, it can be intimidating. It can be very intimidating. I've got all these people coming. What am I, you don't need to worry about it. Ryan's got this under control. It's all organized. You just get to sit back and watch and enjoy, and you know, you'll have to find certain things for them. But to see the look on their faces was just incredibly rewarding, and um, the impact it's had is, is going to go on forever. True. Yeah, definitely true. 
Now, Deborah, how about you? Um, your interaction with the Carpinteria Rotarians, it's something fairly new, I would guess, for you. Um, mm -hmm. What did you think about it? Oh, well, I'm looking to join Rotary. It's such a great group well, of great. people. Right. But, um, and the work you do is just great. But I think that a mo most of all, I've just been really impressed with how generous and welcoming Rotary is and how much they really, um, how much they really take seriously taking care of our Carpinteria Club. You know, the passion and the commitment they have to our club, keeping it safe, beautiful, um, and bright and clean <laughs> for our kids is just wonderful. It is. Um, one thing Rotary tries to strive for is to make an impact in the community. And uh, what I found from this, and I want to share this with you, both of you, the Rotarians on the next day, the day after when the, you know, the, the muscles are aching and the hands are tired and feet are tired from doing this service day, they came and said, that was the greatest event they had ever been to. That's because awesome. that was within a community, a community that appreciated the help, but also because they can give back to community and leave that impact. Mm -hmm. So uh, hats off to both of you. It was, that was outstanding. A great, great tribute to what Thank happened at that work day. The, the ending, I just want to tell you, my favorite part at the very end was I got to high five every Rotarian as they were getting on the bus. <laughs> my hands are a little sore still, <laughs> but they said thank you to me. Yeah. That's, exactly. again, that's what it's all about. It is what it? it's all about. Uh, the vision uh, that Director Brad Howard had, uh, you know, when we first heard about it, it's like, well, you know, it might work, realizing that every other zone institute before this one has always been sit down, it's classroom situation, you go through general sessions, you got five, 600 people sitting in an auditorium. Never once did we ever think about doing a work day. So, I mean, that, that was impressive. And mm -hmm. to have them come out, we were also worried about the um, buy-in from the Rotarians. We were thinking, well, you know, maybe only half are going to do it, maybe a quarter are going to do it. We tried to sell it to where everybody got involved. Literally, everybody did get involved, did. as you can see with the sea of blue shirts. It, it was impressive. Mm -hmm. So, um, future, what, what do you see uh, Rotary doing? Is it something with this that we can carry on a tradition and? maybe recruit in, have those Rotary, Rotary clubs help out? Sure, well, we, we, uh, we have a good relationship. I'm, as I mentioned, I'm in, I'm in Rotary and Deborah is going to be in Rotary and Carpinteria. Jamie's in Rotary and Carpinteria. All of our club directors um, are in Rotary uh, for a reason. Um, and uh, actually our West Side Club Director is in Kiwanis, which is another great organization <laughs> as well. Um, but I, I really want to get the Rotarians involved in the local clubs, but it's, for me it's more important that Deborah, myself, and our folks that are in Rotary are involved in the community. Because if people see us all the time as oh, with our hands out, only with our hands out, rather than our hands out to help other people outside of Boys and Girls Clubs, that sends a much more powerful message. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of leaders that we have in Deborah and Jamie and the other club directors that we have. Well, I want to thank you both for joining me today. Thank I mean, you it's for a, having a me. great project, great things you're doing. And with that, uh, Everybody, we will see you next time uh, when we bring in something else from Rotary. But at this point in time, take a look at the Boys and Girls Club, all that they're doing, and the impact that not only they have, but Rotary has in assisting with them in this great partnership. With that, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.